Agents Podcast. Welcome back, Lab Code Nation, to another episode of the Lab Code Agent Podcast. And today we get to get super creative. Uh, I am going to enjoy this conversation. Those of you who know me know that uh, I love the conversation about marketing and advertising and video and branding and just standing out in general. And so today uh, I get the honor of interviewing Dan Shepling, who is uh, a founder, I believe, he's going to tell us that, of a creative agency, company, whatever you want to call it, that helps real estate brokerages, and we're going to find out who else, if anybody else, stand out in the world of real estate, which, as we all know, has become super diluted. It's very challenging to do so. And uh, if you're watching this, which most of you aren't, you can see over his shoulder are all kinds of awards, aka awards for the content that they've created, the, the ads that they've created, the videos that they've created for some real estate brokerages. And we are going to talk about that deep today. He is going to uh, he's going to probably challenge the way you think on what you could be creating, and uh, you're going to want to follow uh, this guy and this company because they're doing some pretty amazing things. So Dan, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start with this. Uh, let's assume nobody knows who the heck you are. So let's tell us a little about your story. Like, how did you come up in business, and, and what kind of led you to where you are today? Well, I, I generally assume that nobody knows who I am. So that's a good place to start. Um, yeah, we started Capauza uh, coming up on six years ago. Uh, I had bounced around in other agencies. Um, I got my start when I was, was pretty young. My mom was a uh, accountant at an agency and I used to help edit their commercials when I was like 15. And, and it was a couple hundred bucks per commercial that I would edit and they would, they would pay me and it, it, you know, 14 or 15, a couple hundred bucks might as well be a hundred thousand. Uh, so I figured I was rich and I bought golf clubs and I never played uh, with them since because I figured that's what rich people do. You have to buy golf clubs. Uh, and so I've been just kind of just bouncing around the industry uh, for, for a while now. And uh, like I said, six years ago, uh, I started Capauza, then very quickly brought on some some other um, um, much more talented people than I. And uh, yeah, we've been we've had a pretty, pretty amazing run. We're nine people now, um, especially the last you know 18 months have been interesting for everyone. I got really good at Zoom, uh, as I'm sure you did, too. Uh, although your background's way cooler than mine. Uh, this, this is this is all a green screen. It's all fake behind me. So uh, it looks cool. Yeah, it was a pretty good green screen if it was. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I just, I always, I started in, uh, you know, writing and I was at a small agency. So I was the entire creative department. So you had to learn to write and had to learn to design and talk to clients. And then eventually when I started the agency, uh, I, I realized, you know, bring in more talented people to, to help with all of those disciplines. And yeah, we've just been kind of at it ever since. That's really awesome. And so, okay, so first of all, uh, hmm. you, you totally burst my bubble on the awards behind you then. So you can't <laughs> turn around and go pick up those, you know, those Emmys or Grammys or whatever they are. I wish it was a Grammy. That would be pretty fun. Now, now they're, they're, they're real. I just, you know, it's kind of, we, we purposely put them in the back of the agency. Uh, so you don't see them when you come in. Uh, it's just kind of a philosophical thing. The awards are cool, but you know, the people that work here and the, uh, the people that we get to work with and our clients and stuff are the, are the definitely important stuff. But yeah, I, I can, I can pick them up and the, the uh, Emmy is point. I was going to say that's an impressive green screen because the light shining from the window actually, I mean, it's like, wow, that's yeah. really good. Somebody. Has yeah. <laughs> no, it's real. It's real. Everything, everything behind me is real. Um, okay. the Emmy actually makes a funny sound. If you flick it, it's like, it's got like a ping to it. Um, so, but there's actually a disclaimer on the bottom saying you can't resell it because technically you don't own it. The motion picture society owns it. So you can't eBay it. It's so it's not you renting it. It's very interesting. The disclaimer on the bottom is what they don't tell you about it. So, okay. So th this is important to, this is important <laughs> to share with our audience as we go deeper into the conversation about marketing and creating branding and that sort of thing is that really is an Emmy back there. Okay. So Let's tell us, like, there's a bunch of awards, by the way, most of, most of our audience is probably listening. So this is now your excuse if you're listening to, to go to YouTube just to see what his background looks like, uh, which is a, a shelf full of awards, including an Emmy. Give us, give us, tell us more about, first of all, we got to know about the Emmy, but then I want to know what, what is everything else as well? Uh, most of them are Addies. 
there's a couple tellies in there, uh, but most of them are Addie's, uh, Best in Show Addie's. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking at my own screen, um, but the Emmy was actually for uh, uh, an ad for a real estate company, the you know the Northrop Realty uh, Blue Box ad uh, that we did a couple of years ago. Okay, give us more than that. So those of you that don't know what this blue box is, what is that? So it was a commercial we did where it was this ring box um, that signified the, this this couple's journey through life. And in the in there's three parts to it. And in the first part, there is a, uh, gosh, I have to remember it. Uh, the, the guy proposes. And then in this, the second part, the guy uses the same box to, to show keys to say they got a house. And then in the third scene, the, the fiance or wife or whatever you call it, uh, hands him the box and it has a pacifier in it. And that uh, ring box is just a, like a mechanism to show the three stages of, uh, of kind of light of their life and how it all kind of revolved around this one box. And just the house was just part of it. And the tagline was, uh, we sell houses, you make them homes, something like that. Mm. But uh, it was a while ago, so I, <laughs> so I haven't seen it in quite some time, but I, I have to, that, that's from what I remember, because I wrote and directed it, but from what I remember, that's what it was. I'm looking at, there's, there's a, uh, like a loop on your website that's playing that I'm watching, which is, which is by the way, I'm going to just give it to them right now. It's kapauza.co, mm -hmm. uh, kapauza, K-A-P-O-W-Z-A. Uh, so if you're at home and listening to this, you can look this up and see what he's talking about here because you can see some of their examples of ads, um, which is really a kind of a good segue when, when we're talking about the blue box, mm. because this is a great example of what I think most realtors do wrong. And I know most marketing people and ad people agree with me that, you know, the their immediate reaction or strategy when they get to when they think about marketing and social media and things like that is to you know monday market update and is to talk about you know hey, i'm standing in front of my new listing and here i am at an open house and blue box is a great example of you marketed a real estate company without marketing real estate and yeah. you want an award for it and i'm assuming this company's done really well with it uh north of reality is uh they're huge they're, i think they're the number one real estate brokerage team in the country uh, and it's Craig Northrup and his and his crew. Uh, they're they're really really good at I mean buying and or selling homes. Like I, I it, like you know it's funny how many real estate ads I've made over the years. Uh, just watching them do what they do is it's just it's really amazing. And, and like just recently, I, I helped a friend sell a house, and I was like, boy, do I have a realtor for you? And so I used uh, a guy from their team, and it was just incredible. I got 70, 70 some offers in the first weekend. Um, and so, yeah, the, the what, it was so interesting because uh, the, the, there was an, uh, a week, uh, an article in Ad Week about some of the, the Northrop ads that we did, uh, it was particularly the Blue Box one. And it, it was, somebody said, you know, this is the, the anti-real estate ad. And, and like what you just said, you know, everyone else is doing it wrong. They, it, it was purely out of our own ignorance because it was years ago and it was like, well, this is what we'd like to see. And so we, we wrote scripts and we presented them and we went through the whole process. Funny enough, I had just broken my leg. So I was like limping around. I blew off my uh, first post-surgery op. Uh, appointment to to pitch the scripts in crutches and he had giant stairs in his office uh, and so it was more so just uh, making that emotional connection and that you know whether it be funny or whether it be heartfelt we really try to make a make a connection with the brand and its audience and that's done through storytelling and for us it just starts with writing it always starts with a script with an idea uh, we don't pitch uh, treatments or we don't pitch boards, we pitch scripts and we rewrite scripts. And that's like where everything starts before we start even talking visuals. And so that we get that story and we get that emotional connection. And so, yeah, it was just, it was pure, purely just like just our own instincts of how ads should be uh, because they had run like everyone else and the, you know, the market update, the I'm standing in front of this listing ad because Craig himself is, is a, quite a personality. And we just took it a different direction. And it just it just seemed to really catch on. And, you know, nine commercials later from them, um, we've we've had a great relationship. Uh, we're about to start five more. 
Uh, and it's been really phenomenal watching them grow as, as, a, as a brokerage because uh, they, they were uh, just a real estate team first and now they're like a full service brokerage. And it's just, we've been part of that growth. Uh, and it's been really amazing for both of us to just kind of work through that together. That's awesome. And, and I'd like to ask a, a kind of a continuation question to what you were just describing when it comes to, you know, storyboarding and, and, and figuring out what a message needs to be. And, and I'd like you to simplify this because obviously, you know, we're talking to a lot of just individual realtors and, you know, as, as a real estate agent, you're, you are an entrepreneur of your own business. And there might be some team leaders on here. There might be some brokers listening. I don't know, but thinking in that capacity. So when it comes to a brand, so in this case, you're talking about a real estate team, a very big real estate team, but I think the same mindset is applicable to an individual versus a team. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's a shift of a mindset of how do I advertise myself? How do I market myself? How do I brand myself? And so from your perspective, which is a professional perspective, you know, how does somebody sit when they're sitting down to quote unquote storyboard their ideas? How do they start? Where do they go? How do you come up with this stuff versus because I think most just have a copycat syndrome and they see, well, they're doing Monday market updates. I'm going to do a Monday market update because I think that's what I should be doing. Mm. But you and I both know that that's not what you should be doing. So help help our listener, you know, understand or, or, or help them find the, their direction on how they can find their own, you know, form of marketing, their own message. Well, f for their own form of marketing, I would really suggest, you know, it depends on budget and more importantly, what you're comfortable with. And if you are, if you're a one man or one woman show, and you're an entrepreneur and you know, you're working with your own brand. If you're, if you're comfortable with writing, have a blog. If, you, if you're witty and, and interesting, you know, a Twitter account, if you're good at photos an Instagram account, like there, there are ways to market yourself for free. And it's just kind of a matter of figuring out what you're comfortable with and honestly, what you enjoy, because if you enjoy it, you'll keep doing it when you have three followers in the beginning and you're just growing that channel. But for writing stuff like this, for everything that we've ever done or I've ever done creatively has always been inspired by something that wasn't in that industry at all. Like for example, there, there was a, a, a lot of movies I watched around, around the time that, you know, it just, it just led into like the, the blue box kind of feeling. And there was a, it was a bank commercial in California I saw, and I just happened to remember it. And it kind of has a, a similar feel when we're looking for inspiration, we're just not looking in the industry uh, that we're talking to or talking about. Like it's everywhere. Like watch a movie, play a video game, you know, watch a, watch a TV show, watch it, read a book. Like there, there's creative work in our face all the time. And, you know, figuring out the lessons that you can bring into what you like doing um, and bringing the lessons in from your hobbies, like always makes an original voice. For example, I heard about this, this realtor once who was, uh, he was a pilot and, and he just liked to fly. And so, you know, back in the day before drones, he would take photo, aerial photos of all his listings. And sometimes he would take his clients up in his plane and fly them around, but that was his hobby. And that's what, that was true to him that he liked flying and he liked planes and he was an aviation nut and he just worked it, worked it into his business. But more importantly, he was honest with what he liked doing. And so for us, you know, we, we don't start with the writing first because we think it's a better idea, even though at this point, I think it's a better idea, but we did that because, you know, that's what we like. That's, that's just how we, we come to the problem and we come to the, the creative solution as we come to it with the writing. So just, you know, kind of being honest. No, I, I love that. And, and it, it reminds me of, of a good friend of mine, Noel Nielsen, who's a real, real estate agent who, in, in out of Minnesota, who's known for, you know, very creative videos. And she used to always say that her inspiration, I'm sure it still is today, is, is YouTube. She will just watch YouTube videos of usually big company commercials, essentially, and gain her inspiration for ideas to spin it back to real estate. And that's just another, just to kind of spin off of your thought process. Like you said, it's not about just real estate. It's about the feeling that comes with buying a home, the feeling that comes with selling a home, right? It's, it's so much deeper than that. Yeah. 
I'd like your opinion on this uh, because I know it's a pretty general question, but it's a good one, I think. And, and that is, what do you think is wrong with real estate advertising as you see it? You know, like, because I think people need to hear this from professionals like yourself. Like, why do most suck? And I'll just say it like it is. I think it's because the same reason that most advertising sucks. And it's because it's appealing to a lowest common denominator. And it's and they're asking for the sale before they have the relationship. And so they're telling you product features, they're telling you price, they're telling you, you know, JD Power and Associates, even though none of us really know who JD Power and Associates are, uh, they're telling you numbers and they haven't made a relationship yet. They haven't made a, a, a relationship with you with their customer, you don't have a relationship with that brand. So imagine them, imagine all brands as people at parties and someone just wanders up to a party uh, and just starts spouting off their prices and you know uh, the things that, that are product features versus, hey, how are your kids? Or, or where are you from? Or what do you do? Or, or you know, what, 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 what's interesting to you? What turns you on intellectually? Like, who are you? What's your story? And like, then you have a relationship with that person and you can start to um, learn more about them in an organic way. And I just feel like we as a culture in general, we go for the ask way too early. And it's the same thing with, you know, our, our uh, new business development uh, guy, Sean, is amazing at that. Like he, he's truly friends with these people, trying to help them out, trying to get them jobs, trying to send PR leads their way. And if they happen to have work, what we can do with them and help them out, then, you know, that's, that's great. But the first things first is to kind of be uh, a bit of a servant. Uh, in, in a sense. And so brands, I think, just should do that more, you know, be interesting, be funny, be entertaining. Like a commercial is usually a punishment. Like it, it's, it's something that, you know, you didn't pay for the premium subscription. So you have to watch this now. You, you, uh, you have cable, so you have to watch this now. And, and no one is excited to watch commercials unless they're in the Super Bowl. And, and even then, you know, there, there've been off years on and on, uh, on and off. So, you know, think, being honest with yourself about what the commercial and what the ad really is like, like no one's going on Facebook to get the ads. No one's, no one's there going, boy, I hope I get sold to today. And all of us have the option now with Apple, uh, you know, to not track the ads uh, or, or have the apps not ask to not track. And I turned all the tracking off that I can possibly uh, turn off because I hate it when I just go to a site and I check it out and then I'm inundating with, you know, ads for them for the next, you know, six years. Um, we, we just add, we just go for the ask too early, I think. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I love, I love the way you articulated that because, and, and let's, let's talk about this as it relates to social media, because primarily that's what people are doing nowadays. I love that. You, you don't go to a party you don't go to church, you don't go to the grocery store and walk up to people and say, hey, let me tell you about my latest listing. Let me tell you about my, my stats. Let me tell you about the market update, right? So right. why in the hell do you think it's okay to do that on social media? Like, think about it. Like, Dan, you're so right. Because if you did that at any of those things that I described, you're going to get punched, turn, flicked off. They're going to turn around and walk away. They're going to say, buzz off. I don't give a crap. The exact, it's the same thing. It's just digital. And so I love that you said that. I'm totally going to use that. I'm actually going to create content out of that because oh, that's yeah. a great way to describe it. That's a great way to articulate it because it's true. And we, you know, we tell people all the time, it's an 80, 20 rule on social media content. I don't mean to digress too far, but I, I'm, I love what you said. I think it's awesome because that is such a powerful way for, I think, an agent to now wrap their head around and say, holy crap, that's exactly what I'm doing. And yeah, I love it, dude. I love it. And I was also going to say, like, how, how do you like being sold to? Yeah. Like, the, the, look around your, your house or your car. Look at the brands that you, you uh, identify with and you're excited about. Like, I have a MacBook Pro. I have an iPhone. I have Warby Parker glasses. You know, like, why do I, why do I have those things? I have choices. I could have got my glasses at Costco for cheaper. But why do I like Warby Parker and, and why do I buy from there? You know, there's certain things about, you know, it's easier, it gets sent to me, but there's other services that do that. But I like that brand. I like that, what that brand uh, says and, and stands for. But more importantly, I like what that brand feels like. 
And it's almost a tactile emotion where it's like you can feel what, you know, if, if I say Fender, you know what that feels like. If I say Volkswagen, you know what that feels like. And, and you know, the Nike check isn't that great of a logo, but it's, you know, from a design perspective, it's kind of clunky, honestly. And, and the, you know, the just do it typeface is it's just like, it's like impact or something, something like that. It's like not that interesting from a design perspective. But, it, but if I say just do it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so many things come to your mind because of the billions and billions they've spent on stories and they've made relationships with you. And they've gone out of their way to entertain you. Like that Nike commercial that we saw where the, you know, the, it was a split screen edit and they were showing two different clips and how they matched up. It was brilliant. Like some of the best advertising, you know, in the world I think is being done you know, for brands like Nike and stuff. And, and it's because they, they understand that, you know, just do it means a lot to people. And, and people get that tattooed onto their face, uh, not on their face, but like on their arms and stuff, but like yeah. metaphorically on their face. At no point have you ever seen a Nike commercial where they say now our shoes are, you know, 99.99 at Kohl's or something like that because they, they hook you with a story. And the same goes with Apple They're, and Fender and all of these great brands. You know, I'm only saying Fender a lot because I have this amp in the office. I'm I don't even know what Fender is, so, you know. Uh, guitar, uh, like Fender yeah, guitars. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, like Stratocaster and stuff like that. So, but, but we all have brands in our life. Like behind you, you have, you know, the St. Louis Cardinals. And, you know, that is a manufactured story because it's, it's a, uh, it's a, a sports team. So they're always there to, every night is a new story. Um, and so, yeah, it just, the, you know, most of the brands we identify with, we identify with them and we, we are, have our allegiance to them because we, we like how they feel. We like how they taste. We like the touch of, of, uh, Apple or Microsoft or Windows, you identify and people identify themselves. Oh, I'm a Mac person or I'm a PC person. There's a whole campaign about that. And that was also brilliant. And so, you know, it's all kind of tied to that, you know, I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a Tesla person, I'm a Chevy person. And like, we have that in our mind. Uh, and to be fair, Tesla famously does not spend much, if not anything on advertising, but they have great photos. They have great videos. And they have a celebrity CEO that you know, makes news a lot, so they don't have to. But they are spending money on branding. They're just not spending money on advertising. I love it, man. I, I think this is this is fantastic. So I'm going to ask you a question that you you don't you didn't know it was coming. Uh, so let's see how you respond to it. I'm a real estate agent, and um, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. And I say, okay, Dan, I'll listen to your podcast. I'm not Northrop. I am an individual agent. I've got a small little team. Uh, we're not, you know, lighting the world on fire. I'm selling 50 homes a year and, and you know, for whatever million that is, depending on your market. I want to hire you. Where are we going to go from here? Well, first it starts with a conversation and, you know, learning what your goals are and what you hope to get out of any piece of work or anything that we do. There's a million ways we work with people. Uh, it, it's not just big budget commercials. And frankly, we, we don't do as many big budget commercials as people think just because they're big line items. And most brands are only doing them once a year. Uh, and it's like kind of a, a big event kind of spend. Most of our work is done monthly. It's monthly social media management, brand management, website development. It's, it's being the full service creative agency where every month we're touching everything, everything that comes out of your, your shop. And so the first conversation would be, you know, what, what, is, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, okay, you're selling 50 homes now. How many homes would you like to sell next year? Uh, how many homes would you like to sell a year after that? Okay, how are we going to do that? And, and then we start with a creative brief where it helps us learn who you are. And, and so if you're selling 50 homes, you know, and you have a small team, you know, maybe you want to sell, you know, a hundred homes. On a double, yeah. Yeah, maybe you want to double. And then, then we put a plan together and we say, okay, you don't need TV commercials to double. You don't need to run commercials on the Super Bowl to double. What you need to do is you, we need to have a good place for people to find you. You have to have a good brand and a good website, uh, a good way for people to remember you. Uh, so maybe that is a, 
a, a small campaign, a small ad, a, like we've done commercials on cell phones before, which they were really, really, there's some of my, like some of the work back there was for commercials, uh, the awards I'm nodding to, uh, shot, shot, I think on this cell phone, uh, it's just, you know, good writing and good editing. Uh, so, and then we, we put a plan together on how we'll work together every month to make that happen. And when you can start predicting the doubling occurring with social media and targets, you know, that creative brief, we learn who you're talking to and who you're selling to. Uh, and, it, but with everything, it starts with a conversation. It, it like, it, it starts with, you know, what's realistic to you? What, what makes sense to you? How does it, how can we help? Uh, how can we do what we do best so that you can do what you do best? And so it, it, it all starts with a conversation and learning. Uh, and it's, it's usually just a lot of, a lot of questions and a lot of listening. I love it. So if I was, this is a conversation happening. What is a, like, what's a good starter question for that agent who's not really sure where they want to go with this? Like what, what is the question that you're going to ask me uh, besides my goals that's going to get the creative process flowing? I like to always ask, what have you done so far that's worked? Advertising wise, marketing wise. Advertising wise, marketing wise, where do you get your customers now? Like if, you, if you're selling 50 homes a year, uh, that means you're probably plugged into some kind of networks. Where are they currently coming from? Who, who do you connect with? And, you know, are they, is it networking groups? Do you typically sell to, you know, um, middle-aged men? Um, do you typically sell to baby boomers who are looking to downsize? Like, who are we talking to? Who are you talking to? And just like with, you know, all the other brands that I mentioned, we try to figure out, you know, how we can make sure that your brand um, feels how it's supposed to feel to the people it's supposed to feel that way too. Meaning, how can we talk to them in a way that they will listen and they will understand? So for the Northrop stuff, a lot of it, the early work, Blue Box in particular, was first time home buyers. And so the, combina the, com uh, the conversation started with, you know, we have a lot of clients, they sell, God, they must sell 50 homes a minute. I have no idea, but it's a lot. Um, and they the conversation started about around, you know, we want to talk to, we've never done anything tar targeting first time home buyers. The younger generation, they're moving out of their parents' house, they're getting married, they're having kids. So right there, you have the basic structure of the blue box commercial getting married, having kids, buying that first home. And so, and so the, everything is informed by that target, first time home buyers. And, and you can look at any piece of advertising that you really like, it has a target. We're talking to somebody. So the old spice ads, the, the, the hello ladies, how are you? Like he's talking to the ladies, he's talking to the women. And that probably came from research that said, you know, 80% uh, of the deodorant bought in a house was, was bought by a, a woman. Yeah. Uh, not by a man. And a man probably, you know, the research might have said, you know, men don't care what deodorant they wear, they'll wear whatever their girlfriends or wives give them. So the entire commercial is geared around, hello, ladies, how are you? Fanta and so it's funny, but it's, but already the target is built in, in the very first line of the very first commercial. And it's, hello, ladies. <laughs> I love doing that guy's voice. Isaiah Mustafa is the name of that guy. Uh, but, it, but that target right there informs everything. And it's, who are you talking to? The what are you going to say? Now that's where we really get to work. That's our job. But the who are you talking to? That's, that's so important. And any, any campaign throughout history that you've liked, there's, there's usually a, a who are you talking to element to it that just resonated, like a tuning fork hitting the right pitch and it vibrates through culture like Got Milk just vibrated through culture. And it's like, we're not talking to a specific demographic with Got Milk, but we're talking to people that like, ugh, I got this. Did you get the milk? I forgot the milk. Like it was just a grocery list item. And so that, that like I said, like the tuning fork metaphor, it just, it just vibrated through culture because it was so spot on and it just hit the perfect note. And so we can't find that note until we know who you're talking to. That's a, that's a totally different topic for a different day, but it's, you know, it's like the whole, that's what milk has done. And, and milk made us believe that uh, cow's milk is good for humans. And that's, you know, obviously you can tell where I go with that. Um, but they have done such a masterful job of marketing over the years because it's huge industry. And the Dairy Association said, if people know the truth about cow's milk, 
that it's probably not that great for humans, they're going to stop buying it. And so all they did was shift the way we think. And, and the reason I say that is not because I'm pro, you know, or anti cow's milk, but it's because you as a real estate agent, as a real estate professional, have the same ability to shift the way your audience thinks about you. And it's up to you to deliver that message, that feeling, right? And, and obviously, Dan, that is exactly what you guys do. And so I want you to tell our audience uh, a little bit about the other commercial that you guys are really well known for, which is the one where the kids are drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's, there's a series of five of those. Um, and, and, and you talk about the kids that are sitting around talking about real estate. Yeah. Um, that actually started, uh, so it's a funny story. It, it started this idea I had sitting in my neighborhood and I was watching these, these squirrels and, and birds and raccoons. And I was like, wouldn't it be funny if like the squirrels and the raccoons were just commenting on, you know, what was being sold and what was happening in, in the neighborhood because they're there all the time. And so there's like a cat and like a raccoon. And so, you know, I, I had the original idea and then <laughs> I, I talked to some uh, our pr production partners and I was like, hey, how much would that cost to animate? Like actual hair, like a Geico commercial, like the, uh, you know, where you actually see the hair. And it was phenomenally expensive. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, you know, $50,000 just for the hair on the raccoon. And I was like, okay, <laughs> but maybe, maybe it should be kids. <laughs> kids are in neighborhoods too. And so it became kids and then it became, what if they, uh, they were the, like the personalities of Seinfeld? And so in the script, there's a Jerry and a Lane, a George, and, and they kind of have this uh, archetype of, of just the, the um, what is it, like the sitcom kind of archetype. And then it just kind of, it just kept building. And then it was like, well, what if, you know, they, they were also real estate experts and they're just kind of sitting around and they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're kids of the neighborhood and they're just, they're sitting around watching these homes being sold. And they, and just Northrop just happens to be their favorite because that's the one that sells the most in their neighborhood and they see that the most. And it's just, there's something, the absurdity of, uh, I always try in every commercial, uh, at least comedy one, we, we try to have two elements, a visual and an auditory joke. Uh, and most comedies, uh, most commercials these days aren't doing physical comedy as much. The, you know, think of the AT&T girl, she's standing around and they're just saying witty things and it's fine, but like there's a whole other side of comedy that is, is really fun. And so the idea of these young kids acting like adults, uh, talking about things that kids shouldn't be talking about, like, you know, this is a four bedroom, you know, with a walk-in closet and all this stuff that the poor actor, uh, he, he had to, he had to just, his name is Malcolm. He was like trying to, trying to get that line and it was really tough. Uh, but the kids are phenomenal and, you know, we had a great casting process um, and that whole thing, it just, it, it, we shot it over in December in the midst of, of COVID. And so there was a lot of COVID protocol and stuff like that. So that part wasn't as fun, but yeah. It, and it just kind of grew and grew and we shot five spots in two days uh, and it just it grew into its own thing. And then we saw the, the really fun part is so, you know, you do it and then you shoot it and then you edit it and then you do a few rounds of edits and really fine tune it. And then it goes to color correction and then it goes to audio mix on a dub stage. And then it all gets exported and, and folded together. And it's like you know, months and months of work into just two files that collapse onto each other. And uh, you send it out and then, you know, they had planned on releasing them slowly over the course of like six months. And so like, it'll pop up in my Facebook feed sometimes where I'll just see them. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about those. It's so interesting. Like when you finish a project, you spend so much time worrying about like, the sound of the, the lawnmower in the background. It has to come at a right moment because the, the joke lands at a certain beat. But once you finish that, it's like almost downloaded out of your head and, and put into the recycle bin. Uh, and then you completely forget about it. So I've had people quote our commercials to me and I have no idea what they're talking about because uh, I've already moved on because I'm trying to write the next one. Uh, and just the writing process is a whole lot of procrastinating for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. So why don't you set the table um, of just describing, can, can you describe like maybe the, the OG uh, of those commercials, of those ads, and then tell our audience where they can go see it? 
Yeah, they're, uh, I'm pretty sure they're on our website. Uh, I know they're on uh, Northrop's website, Northrop's Facebook. I don't know which one ran first, to be honest, because I think I think the it was the treehouse one. Is that the one you're talking about? Where the, the uh, no, I was talking about the one where they're standing in the front yard, looking across oh. the street. They're looking across the street, and but he's talking about his treehouse. Okay. Know, could they, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, could, could, yeah. So the 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 joke is that they're they're standing there watching a realtor set up. Uh, a showing, That's right. yep. a and uh, I believe that was actually the first one we shot that day. So that is actually the OG. Uh, and so they're they're talking about, um, you know, do you think you could sell my treehouse? And the one kid goes, well, what does it got going for it? And he says, uh, you know, uh, walk in, uh, plenty of space, uh, like um, you know, great view, uh, half bath. And the kid, the one kid goes, how do you get a half bath out of a treehouse? And then there's this long beat and then they just go, oh, that's disgusting. And then the kid says, hey, I've peed out of worse things. <laughs> and then that's the, and that's pretty much the end of the spot. I was just amazed that they let us make a pee joke. You know, <laughs> it's always amazing when that happens. We're like, is this okay? Someone gonna, someone gonna, someone gonna like, you know, how far can we push this before someone, you know, gets, gets upset? But uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's the that's the basic premise of the commercial is they're they're talking about could they sell my tree house and what's it got going for it and it's uh, listing all these real estate terms. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and to go see that you could probably the first place I would go is to your website, which again is is kapowza.co, K-A-P-O-W-Z-A. If you weren't paying attention the first time, dot co, not dot com. Uh, otherwise, if you want to go stalk Northrop Realty, Northrop is North. R-O-P, R-O-P, not U-P. Um, go check them out, Google them, find them. I'm sure it's all over the place. Uh, I'm sure they have a YouTube channel. Uh, check this stuff out. I mean, I think it's just, pretty, it's just pretty amazing stuff. It's always interesting to talk to an ad slash creative slash marketing mind because you know us real estate professionals are self-proclaimed for the most part, right? And it's just, we're learning as we go and we're creating our own stuff. And some are amazing and others are just a bunch of followers. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's the beauty of the real estate world is that it's very innovative. Um, unlike most industries, it accepts and evolves quickly. And it's like the innovator of all industries and everybody follows later, uh, which is probably one reason why you're working with people in the industry because they, they, they get it, right? Uh, other than big corporations. So the last question I have for you before we wrap up is, all right, now I'm an agent and I'm like, okay, yeah, I never really thought about hiring an, an agency. Um, what does that look like in terms of cost? You know, can I afford this? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on uh, what the, what the goals are. And that is one of the conversations, especially if, if it is a commercial that we're writing for one of the first conversations, uh, that we start is what budget should we be writing for? Cause a commercial can cost 10,000, a commercial can cost 200,000. You know, it, it's, it could be one day, it could be 10 days, it could be in a house, we could blow up a house. It, it, it's, always, uh, it's always just a matter of what the goal is. Um, but, you know, for, for everything that isn't a commercial, like the, the, you know, the social media management, the branding stuff that we do, the website, the, um, the design work, the, the creative and brand monthly work that we do with, honestly, most of our clients, that's how we work. Uh, that just comes down to an hourly rate. Uh, we just bill hourly for that. And so it's, you know, we can get a lot done for, you know, you know, 10, 15 hours, 30 hours a month. Um, and it's interesting because you talk about the industry as a whole, it's just like the, the real estate industry, especially the last, you know, you know, five or 10 years has, has seen so much outside competition with like the, the Zillows of the world and the the large the the large companies that are that are kind of coming in and acting like a virtual realtor, uh, and you have to market on the same level. Like you you have to be uh, just as good as Redfin. Um, you have to be just as good as all of these large companies uh, because you're in the same competition. Everyone's on the same playing field. Everyone's fighting for the same attention. Uh, and you know, it doesn't have to be a Super Bowl commercial, but everyone's on social media just about, I mean, and you can find just about anybody and targets have gotten so good and honestly, so creepy these days, you can find just about anybody in social media. 
I agree. Uh, so, so there's a lot we can do. And, and I think for anyone interested, you know, my email uh, is dan at capalza.co. Would love to have a conversation if we think we could help, or if we don't think we could help, we could point you in the right direction. Uh, that's, that's usually what we try to do. Uh, you know, we just, you know, we're just out here. Uh, I think our, we don't really have an agency tagline, but if it, it we, the one we always say is, you know, we're, we're nice folks that do some great work. Um, we're all pretty casual. And so I put a button up shirt on for this because I feel like I was supposed to, but now you're in a t-shirt and I was like, ah, I should have worn a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I am wearing shorts. So that's, you, <laughs> you can't, you can't see that though. I love it. Yeah. Well, I, I usually, well, this, this time of year, I'm usually in shorts too, but, uh, and then sweatpants, of course, that the whole work from home thing has worked out really well for my wardrobe. Now, most of my clothes are collecting dust in my closet. Yeah, most um, of my clothes don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So say your email address one more time. If anybody wants to reach out to you. Dan at capalza.co, D-A-N at capalza.co. Awesome. And again, the website is capalza.co. You should definitely go check this out. If nothing else, to be entertained by their ads, um, because that's exactly what you will be. And, and I think it's important to point out, like one of the companies that you've done a lot of work for is that Northrop Realty. They're based out of the East Coast, Maryland, D.C., Virginia area-ish, Correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, I would, I would highly encourage all of our listeners to go check this out, whether you're an individual agent or you are a team, uh, this is the kind of stuff that you guys hear it from me all the time. You know, this, if you follow me, you know, this like differentiation is the key to your success. If you want to grow in this world that we now live in, you can't be like everybody else. You have to differentiate. Northrop has clearly done a really good job of that. And you should go check that out. And then guess what? You should emulate that, uh, figure it out. And if it means hiring somebody like Dan and Capalza, then you should do that uh, if you don't have that creative mindset. And so, Dan, this is great, man. It's been a fun conversation. I think it's kind of an outside the box thinking. I know it is an outside the box thinking. And so it's fun for me to get to pick the brains of, of the creatives because there's not enough of them out there. So thank you for being on the show today. And uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, folks, Go check them out. Thanks so much. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Awesome, brother. Take, take care. See you. Laptop Agents Podcast.